Hello, welcome back to the channel. I had a couple of comments on the one shot videos. A couple of people wanted to know how to level this thing from the start. Now, I didn't do that. I, well, I leveled it, but I leveled it on law notes in Ultimate and went from 1 to 38 before really doing anything on the character. I mean, I didn't want to say go in and level it a different way than what you'll be using as the main attack skill. So I thought I'd try this out. And I ended up, I've got this to level 20. I've got a load of information about the gear, the skills, the attribute points. I'll stick all that up on the screen in a minute, quickly whiz through that. And then if, if all you need to know is where to allocate the skill points and which bits of gear to use, if you, if you know enough about Act 1 to be able to run around and pick all that stuff up, that's all you need to watch. If you're a completely new player and you want to get into this and do this character, you can do it. This is a fresh save slot. I renamed the save folder. I do this a lot to do these fresh starts videos. I had nothing in stash. I went in and went around and collected the stuff I knew I'd need. Farmed the bosses I knew I'd need to farm to get the items I need. And it worked out really well. First up, the attribute points and the skill point allocation per level. Pause the video or just go and copy and paste it out of the video description. If that's all you need, grab it, great. If you need more than that, if you need a walkthrough, that is coming up. So don't worry about that if you look at that and you think, what the hell is that all about? It's so like I say, you're either going to understand that and that's all you need, or you're going to need a walkthrough, which is coming up. Same goes for the devotion list. I won't read through it all. That's what I did on the character that I got up into the 50s or 60s or wherever it's at. Apart from, I don't think I've got all the points that I needed to put into Abomination yet, but it doesn't matter. As with the attributes and skills, if that's all you need, take it away. Go and start playing. Otherwise, stick around for the walkthrough coming up after I run through the gear quickly. It's a very brief summary of the main gear items that specifically buff Dreek's Eagle Eye. There's more to it than that, but... Again, if you know what you're doing or you've got a vague idea what you're doing, that's all you need. If you know where to go and farm those items, you'll be fine getting them. Otherwise, right now, we're getting into the full walkthrough where I go in at level one. And the video will show highlights of all the level ups, all the, all the, all the shrines, where to get all the gear from, and all the useful stuff that you're going to need to know to get a build that can, well, not in this video but very soon will be one shot in bosses. This is the new character I started in a fresh save. Most of the time when I'm running around not doing anything significant, I've got the video speeded up to times two, Still just to shorten down. the amount you're gonna have to look at this. First thing I'm gonna do here, I'm picking the quests up, and then the instead of rotating the map, I'll show you how to click on that note that's up there, get your first 50 XP points. There's always a body here. It's got a better weapon on than what you've got. You might as well use it for a while. Level two, pick your occultist, mastery, stick two points in the mastery, stick one point in Dreeg's evil eye. And as I said, the first five level ups, I'm gonna put the point into spirit. This is so that you don't encounter any energy issues when you're casting Dreeg's evil eye. And every level up, I'll put the text on the screen, so even if you're watching this with the sound off, you get a rough idea what's going on. I'm going to pick all the lore notes up that I can get, just for a bit of free XP. I'm going to get Francis's gun, because it's a decent weapon. And once you start putting points into Bloodburst on Dreeg's Evil Eye, that'll pull in weapon damage. So it's probably a good idea to have the best weapon you can get until you get up to Pusquil's Cave. Kill Pusquil maybe more than once. You might have to quit out and come back in. Kill Pusquil over and over to get his tail. Level 3, Spirit and Attribute, 3 points in the Mastery. What I'm doing here is a mix of shooting things and chucking Dreeg's Evil Eye. So I'm not going to rely on Dreeg's Evil Eye just yet. 
weight it's a little bit stronger and then I'll probably only be using that and not the weapon. Yeah, I just spammed Dreek's Evil Eye into that boss and took him out quite quickly. What I'm doing here is going into the loot filter, turning off the common white items. Because the amount of money you're going to get won't outweigh the frustration you'll feel when you continually fill in your inventory up with white items and having to go and sell them. There's a couple more lore notes in here well worth picking up. Get you on your way to the next level up. Level 4, another attribute point into Spirit. Right now I'm going to go and put 3 points straight into Blood Burst because this does not increase the energy needed by Dreek's Evil Eye and it will draw in weapon damage into Dreek's Evil Eye, which is good for all sorts of reasons. It means any attack damage converted to health you've got on the go will work with Dreek's Evil Eye and if the stronger the weapon you get and the more skills and devotions and gear you've got that feed into weapon damage it will then feed on into Dreek's Evil Eye Rescue this guy. You can speak to him later, map back to the rift you've just unlocked and then carry on get into the Burial Cave Kill the Reanimator. While you're on the way there collect as many ether crystals from these cluster things as you can because you'll need one for the shrine in the Burial Cave and you'll need four for a quest that you'll be able to cash in back at Devil's Crossing that will give you an additional skill point. And any more you get, you will need them for crafting and for other shrines later, so yeah. Level 5. Attribute, Spirit, 1 point in the Mastery, 2 points in Bloodburst. So while I'm leveling Bloodburst up, I'm still going to keep the Mastery going. Because what you could do is you could just stop at, at one point in your Mastery and like max out Dreek's Evil Eye. But then you'd be the one getting one-shotted, not the bosses or the other enemies. Your, your physique and your everything else would be low compared to the damage you're doing. So what I'm doing here, I'm not doing a, this is how to max this skill out the quick way. This, what I'm doing here is, this is how to max this skill out while creating a balanced character that will not frustrate you. Here I go, getting into the reanimator fight. What you can see here is the combination of shooting him and hitting him with Dreek's Evil Eye gets rid of him pretty quickly. Even at times to speed on the video, I mean, it's, it is a pretty quick fight. And what you got to remember is Dreek's Evil Eye is doing acid damage, which is the, you know, that's the, the, the hit damage. And it's also doing poison damage, which is damage over time. So you can kite things, you can shoot Dreek's Evil Eye at them and then run away. And they'll still be taking damage while you're running around because the poison is doing damage over time on them. For Shrine Restored, go into the Devotions and take Red because you're going to do Rat as your first completed constellation. What I've done there, I have a Mutagenic Ichor. The insect things tend to drop those and I've put it on the gun. Should have saved it for Puskal's Tail, but you know me. Level 6 level up, same as level 5, point in spirit. 1 point in mastery, 2 points in blood burst. I'm going to talk to Kasparov, you'll want 4 ether crystals. And in exchange for 4 ether crystals you get a bit of XP and you get a skill point. Which you then immediately go and dump into blood burst. This guy wants you to kill 3 named enemies. You need 5 scrap for Barnabas. You probably won't have it yet. You'll get scrap off that guy that you rescued, Faldis. That was when we rescued up by the rift. Talk to the spirit guy. Just talk to her and come out of the conversation. You'll get XP for talking to her. Let's check in. Now what I'm going to do is take the alternate route. I'm not going to bother running through the cave. I'm going to go into the dump. And I'm going to look for Pusquil's cave. Pusquil's cave can spawn in one of three random places. 
that's not it that's the exit from the burial cave that little pile of rubbish just to the north of me now that's one place where Puskal's cave can spawn level seven yeah attribute and physique one point in mastery two points in bloodburst I'm gonna keep doing that until I max bloodburst out right I'm gonna go over here now and kill this Pharos the rotted guy in this building he's one of the three enemies that the bloke in Devil's Crossing wants me to, to kill get a bit of XP for that I'm now heading up to the second potential place where Pusquil's cave can appear what I would recommend is if you can't find the cave quit out the game restart run back in there it is there so there's there and there's that other place so I'm going to kill Pusquil and I'm lucky, fairly lucky, because the first time I killed him he dropped his tail, which is a weapon which buffs Curse of Frailty and has poison damage on it and is really good for this build. Until you can start farming Sister Crimson's Scepter, which is quite a long way in the future. Not massively long, I mean you've got to kill Krieg, you've got to get into Forgotten Gods and you've got to run all the way up to where she spawns. So read that stuff on the screen, I won't bother reading it out. While you're in this cave, have a look around for any piles of stuff that they might have scrap in them. Remember, you need five scrap. I'm just checking how much I've got, and I've got five. Well, I've got at least five. I'm going to talk to Barnabas. Cash that quest in, and that will open this little trap door. I would say, as soon as you can go in here, go in here. It's not a difficult boss fight. I'm going to say whatever level you get to, it won't be a difficult boss fight. You may have to kite him a bit, but you will kill him fairly easily. level eight as you can see from level seven onwards i started swapping over putting points into physique attribute points and i'm still putting one point in the mastery and two points into bloodburst which is now maxed out you can hit the spiders down there from up here sometimes it's a little bit frustrating occasionally when, when the shots just hit the wall Really with this area it's linear to just follow the path around. You can go up there and kill stuff if you feel like it, but I was in a bit of a rush just to get through here, get this boss fight out of the way. Because this area is self-enclosed, it doesn't lead anywhere. It's um once you clear it out and you've got the shrine and you kill the boss, there's not a heck of a lot of point coming back in here. Viloth does drop a decent acid damage ring. I would argue it's not worth farming him for it because it's the, the difference it's going to make to your damage output is, is not massive it would be nice to have two of those rings but if i said to you you've got to come in here and farm him until you get two of those rings that would probably put you off playing this build because it would be pretty boring doing that so i'm not going to recommend doing it if you want to do it fair enough if you've got the the willpower but there are easier ways to get decent items for this build than to come in here and farm Viloth for his random chance ring. Of course, saying that, when I kill him, the first time I kill him in here, I do get one drop. That's just the game taking the mick. When I say to someone, don't farm because it's a low drop chance rate, you get one drop straight away. Whereas later on, when I go and try and farm Primordian with a necklace, which is really worth getting, and he's an easy boss to get to to fight, it took me, I think it took four or five attempts. I haven't included the footage of all of those, obviously. I've only included the footage of the one where it drops, because who the heck wants to watch me kill him the same thing over and over and have no drop? Anyway, just up ahead, we will get into the... I don't know why I haven't got the footage speeded up here. I probably forgot to it times two. So I apologise for the pedestrian rate that I'm moving through this cave.
Every now and again I'm stopping to check gear to see if there's anything worth equipping. A lot of the times when I've been to shops and when I've been sorting through gear I've removed the footage because it, it should be pretty obvious that what you want to do is equip gear that buffs acid and poison damage. Doesn't convert damage types away, specifically doesn't convert acid damage away from being acid damage to something else that you're not buffing because that's counterproductive, you don't want to do that. Actually, it's pretty good that I left the speed at the one times because it shows how easy it was to kill this guy. Right, there you go. Vilos Ring. He's dropped his ring and I'm level 9. Level 9 is a bit of a complicated one. One point in the mastery, one point in curse of frailty, one point in focus gaze. And just to help, I forgot to allocate the points. I'll do it in a minute when I'm back in town when I realise. Get this shrine this is the second one you can get the first point in rat constellation which i'm going to complete and then reclaim the point of the spirit guide and then start populating wretch this is where you can put dreeg's evil eye onto mouse button too so when you swap stuff over you can see the damage change on the screen now people will be saying to me why don't you keep dreeg's evil eye on mouse button two and put your weapon attack somewhere else because this is how i'm doing it you can put these skills wherever the heck you want I put move to on left mouse button. I put weapon attack on right mouse button. And I got the skill on button one. And that quest reward is great. That quest reward gives you an extra inventory bag. Level nine. I just put the information up on the screen again. One point in the mastery. One point in curse of frailty. One point in focus gaze. Focus gaze buffs Dreeg's evil eye damage. But turns it into having a four second cooldown. Curse of Frailty on its main node doesn't have any resistance reduction to acid and poison. However, Pusquil's Tail does add poison resistance reduction to Curse of Frailty. Good, you're back. What am you follow the road. Heading on up now towards the Whitemire Rift and the northern part of the Act 1 map. I am killing Slith and hoping for Slith Necklace drops. You get an added benefit of getting a Slith, Slith Necklace is you get three for the quest that the guy near the Whitemire Rift gives you. But what that will do is when you cash that quest in is you will start earning Rover's Reputation. Rover's is one of the factions that sells gear items and blueprints that suit this build. So the quicker you get Rover's reputation building up the better. Level 10, don't pick a second mastery yet. Stick your attribute point into physique. Stick two points into your occultist mastery bar and stick one point into Vulnerability, which is the second node of Curse of Frailty. Immediately goes up to four points because Pusquil's tail is adding three points to it. And that will increase your Acid and Poison resistance reduction that Curse of Frailty puts on enemies. Level 11. Reach level 11 really quickly because that totem that I destroyed gave me a massive amount of XP. Attribute point physique, three points in the mastery.
the four second cooldown might seem like, oh, I don't want that. But the damage that gets done, you can chuck it now, Dreg's Evil Eye, like a grenade into a group of enemies. And it will either instantly kill whatever it hits or put enough poison damage on them that they're not going to be around for long. And Puskor's Tail is a decent melee weapon. So if you're on that four second cooldown, you can just whack away with Puskor's Tail and it does quite a decent amount of damage. Here's a rover's quest, hand in the slith necklaces, actually no I can't because I haven't got three yet. I'll go and get the next one and then nip back and cash that in and I'll immediately get 250 rover's reputation. And then any time I kill undead, which aren't in this area but they'll be at the start of the next area, I'll be getting rover's reputation. Whereas if I hadn't cashed that quest in and I haven't started earning rover's rep, killing stuff wouldn't add to it because it wouldn't already be there getting earned. There you go, that was the 250 rover's rep coming in. That's that slith ring, I'm just swapping it over with whatever rubbish ring I had on. It's decent, those resistances are alright. It's a good one to keep on until you get something that's like massively better. And there's a cave just up here, get into this cave and there is a shrine in here. There's also a slith tongue acid damage weapon. So if you couldn't be bothered getting Pusquil's tail, you can use this. But I would say go and farm Pusquil, get Pusquil's tail, because it's really good for this build. Don't think you're going to save yourself some time by not farming Pusquil, because the difference it makes is, I would say, if I've got to recommend farming anything, farm that, farm the Putrid Necklace, and also <laughs> later on farm the Snake Clan Witch Doctors for the level 20 Rogue or Toxic Effigy offhand. So there's quite a few decent items to farm. In all this stuff, I'll cover it. And then right at the end of the video, I'm going to do a recap on the gear, where it came from, and the importance of getting it. And also what components are the best to put on this stuff. There's another totem fight. Level 12, yeah, I forgot to allocate the points until I got to level 13. But it's this, three points into Blood of Dreeg. Blood of Dreeg's a great skill. It's a heal skill. It's a health regen over time. It's an acid damage skill. It's up for 30 seconds and you've got to keep recasting it. However, when you get the Putrid Necklace, that adds two minutes to the uptime. This bloke stuck in the corner was annoying me. I think I, I'd left Trig's evil eye on my attack button. I couldn't understand why I wasn't hitting him with the weapon. I am stupid fault. Shrine cleansed. We all know where this point's going to go in. It's going to go in rat. And I think this is the node that actually gives you quite a bit of poison damage. Yeah. So where it's talking about added damage, it's talking about adding it to the weapon. However, with Blood Burst maxed out, even without any gear that converts stuff. Here we go, Slith Tongue weapon. It's always there. It's not bad, but I recommend farming Pusquil. Yeah, as I said, it's all right. But yeah, get a Pusquil's tail. But the Curse of Frailty bonuses, it's really good. Next up on the to-do list is go and get a guaranteed caster offhand, which will, I think it's got something like a 15%, plus 15% to all damage on it, plus it's got energy regen. So it's good, and it'll be, unless you got really lucky and had something drop, you can go and get this thing, and it's always in the same place. Plus you can kill these other two guys for the kill three guys quest and Milton Hart. It's all in the same sort of area. So once you get to that foggy bank rift, come down this road, killing wantonly as you go, because that's always a good thing to do. And then just across here, sometimes there's a big ether cluster here, sometimes there's a totem, you'll find Gilius the whatever, this lightning guy, He's the th you just killed Negan just up by the rift, blink and you miss it. So you killed Gilius as well. That's the three of those people killed out for that quest. Clear the area, get yourself a bit of breathing space, and then this dead body. 
I'm just showing you on the map how to get here. There's the Foggy Bank Rift. That's where you would have come down from it, just down here. And there's always this dead body every game session. So if you quit the game and come back in, it'll be there again. And that caster offhand is always there. It's a pet thing, but it's got, like I said, it's got plus 15% all damage on it. Wax up Dreeg's evil eye damage considerably. And it's got energy regen on it and whatever you get from the prefix that gets added on. So that's worth getting. And then you just wander around this area, look for the star on the map if you picked up the Milton Heart quest. Sometimes he's in this building, sometimes he's wandering around. There's the, the gold star on the map. He's at there he is. He's coming in hot now. So you take him out and whoever's spawning around with him. And then you can go back, cash out Milton quest in, and get ready to progress further on up to the north after you've done everything you need to do. Yeah, that's the kill three guys quest. So you cash that in, get some money and I think it's probably some scrap. Level 13 attribute into physique. This is where I remembered that I didn't do, so I had two points there because I didn't do level 12. So there's your three points in Blood of Dreek that would have been level 12's level up. And there's your three points in the mastery that's a level 13 level up. I stick Blood of Dreek on the Q key. because so I've reassigned buttons 4, 5 and 6 to Q, W and E. Just personal preference. You don't have to do that, which is what I do. So I've got attacks on 1 and 2 and I've got Blood of Dreek on Q. So it's all in the same sort of place on the keyboard. This makes it easier for me. Yeah, Milton dropped his monster in frequent hat. I think it was better than whatever else I had. I mean, if you can get something with acid damage on it, that's what you need to go for. If not, get something that's got good resistances on it. There's Luther Graves. You rescue him, he can spawn in one of several different places around here you rescue him and then when you go back to devil's crossing he's another shopkeeper you also get a whole stack of devil's crossing rep for rescuing him next up north of the foggy bank rift you have the joy of farming primordian to get the putrid necklace in this cave in my opinion it's the best amulet you're going to be able to get before you can get Ronaprax's Sting, which is a Dreeg's Evil Eye item. So Primordian's this purple named boss thingy here. I had to kill him, her, it, whatever, about four or five times before the amulet dropped. Other characters I run in here and killed him and got it straight away, but um, not this time. There you go, putrid necklace. As I've mentioned before with monster and frequent items, they will drop before you break the, the boss ball. So if you don't see it drop as soon as you kill the boss, you didn't get it and you're gonna have to go and farm him again. Put all the wonderful Blood of Dreek stuff on that. Excellent piece of kit. Level 14, attribute point physique, point into terrifying gaze. All those nodes on Dreek's Evil Eye will be maxed out eventually.
This boss fight, I did an example of a close quarters kiting fight. So I'm hitting him with Dreeg's Evil Eye and running around in circles. I'm not getting too far away because if I get too far away, he will start chucking great big flaming boulders at me and bringing the ceiling down. But where I was staying, that close quarters kiting fight, he just did his close quarters arm flailing, which was totally ineffective, as you could see. Now... I'm going to get the blacksmith. The way I do it with this, talk to Duncan, leg it across, talk Angrim into giving me whatever it is Duncan wanted, then go back and see Duncan, give it to Duncan, go back to town, cash a Duncan quest in. Meanwhile, getting a bit of XP fighting. Now these guys, these snake clan global what's it up here these are the boys that have got a chance to drop that level 20 offhand they didn't there but i'll get one in a bit this is angry and duncan wants the thing i'll see that he saves the world whatever map back to duncan hello duncan i've got your thing Hooray, let's have a party. So you go back to Devil's Crossing, leg it inside, there he is at his blacksmith shop. And you can see when you go and talk to him, he's got three relics that aren't really useful for this character, so don't even waste your, your materials crafting one. However, if you go and have a look in the armour section, you put poison damage in and no guns, but there's a default item, Occult Horn. That is a really good offhand to use until you get the toxic growal effigy thing and that last thing there vitriolic gallstone that is the component that you will be crafting two of and you will be putting one on your weapon and one on your offhand and then they both give you the toggle skill in venom weapons which stacks so you can have both those things active at the same time i'll cover that in a bit more detail at the end of the video so after doing the whole duncan thing go back to the burritch outskirts rift and go into this burial cave to get a shrine. There's an entrance here. If that's blocked by fire, there's one just to the left. Here's a shrine. Grab that. I think I can complete rat now. Yay, rat's complete. So when I get a chance and when I remember, I'll go back to town, I'll go to the spirit guide and I'll reclaim the crossroads node point that I no longer need because Rat is a self-supporting constellation. Level 15. Physique attribute, three points in a mastery bar. Grab a few ether crystals and some XP from killing rotting corpses while you're in here. Dreek's evil eye is getting pretty strong now, which is what you want. So it wouldn't be much use as a boss killing skill if it didn't kill stuff. What I'm doing here is running round the area of Burritch outskirts, trying to find as many little camps of these snake clan global things as I can. I'm trying to find witch doctors who have a chance of dropping the global toxic effigy. And eventually I'll get lucky and one will drop. There you go, you can see the, the default stats that come on that thing. Acid damage, poison damage, increased energy regen, ether resistance is the default attribute on that item. Skill cooldown reduction, uh, it's got plus two to Dreeg's Evil Eye and it adds in 26% weapon damage to Dreeg's Evil Eye. It's a great item, go and get yourself one of them. Definitely worth, worth farming that area over and over till you get one to drop.
I thought I'd have a look for Gutworm. He's a bit of a challenge under level 20, not level 15. A presence far more powerful than you dwells. Yeah, there he is. Well, he's not more powerful than me because I've got the skill of kiting and running away. Shame that didn't directly hit him, but you can't have everything. Here he comes. And see how long it takes me to kill him. <laughs> Quite a while. It's not a one shot by any stretch of the imagination, but it's also not a difficult fight. Village really Drift, you can see how effective Treek's Evil Eye hand grenade is now. These boys come out of the ground, hit them with Curse of Frailty, dump Treek's Evil Eye on them. Those heroes, yeah, it's like a maybe a two shot on the heroes there. One thing you can do now is go and grab the cultist orders from this lectern in this house. This is the thing that you can use to either side with Dereni and get a key from him or turn him hostile and kill him. I'd prefer to turn him hostile and kill him, particularly in normal. He doesn't really serve any useful purpose. One school of thought in ultimate is you can repeatedly farm him for rep. Have you found a rip good work? There have been warden Well you know it's sad uh, is I dropped the cultist orders so they don't disappear out of my inventory when I talk to him. So then in higher difficulty I can confront him straight away without getting to, all the way up to Burwich village. What's with all the I and I'm friendly. That means I can go and pick up the fabric quest. Another good reason for fighting and killing Dereni is Bourbon will give you a Blood of Chathon as part of the quest reward. That will allow you to craft several different relics, several different low level relics. And the earlier you start getting things like Bloody Chathon, the better. I'll get the reputation panel up just to show I'm friendly with Devil's Crossing, which means that friendly rep, Constance up here, will have a new quest for you the fabric quest up at the abandoned waterfront. While I'm here, pop in to see the spirit guide, reclaim the crossroads node. 
because rat provides enough red to support itself. Go back into devotions on my screen and stick that point in the first node of wretch. I finally remembered even though I'm level 16 that at level 15 I can craft an occult horn. So I'll use that for a few levels before I reach 20 when I'll be able to use the global toxic effigy.
I've cut out most of the navigation of this area because due to randomly blocked passages, not a lot of point me putting in a route to get from the rift to the exit staircase because chances are your route will be different. Explore the whole area, kill everything that's in there, do the totem, get to the stairs out and then progress through the next area until you get to the shrine. And head through the area after that picking up as many ether crystals as possible until you get to the final rift which is the warden's laboratory right at level 20 well on the way to creek which is good I put a point into Physique and I put three points into Blood of Dreeg. It's kind of a last ditch attempt to give myself a little bit of survivability before the Krieg fight. Could have put those points anywhere really, but three points in Blood of Dreeg is a good idea. And of course at level 20 I can nip back to Devil's Crossing and equip that Global Toxic Effigy. As, as the text on the screen says, this will be an upgrade from whatever you're currently using. Any advantage you can get before you go and face Krieg is good. As a quick reminder of the skills that I've got and the points that are in them. Devotions, four points in Rat, three points in Wretch. That's the seven shrines that you pick up in Act 1. It's a Krieg fight. It's not exactly spectacular, but it's also not particularly risky. You can see Blood of... Um, I get them mixed up. I say Blood of Drieg, I mean Drieg's Evil Eye. It's game's fault for naming the skills similarly. <laughs> Always blame the game, don't blame yourself. Good dodge of the Ether Wave attack there. See, look at his health go. Another couple of points adequately spent around and one or two more gear items and it'd definitely be an easy one-shot in each phase. I mean, you're not going to one-shot the whole thing. Second phase, face tank him so that he can't do his nasty ranged dart attack. I mean, you could watch this and say, oh, this was supposed to be a one-shot boss killing build. Well, it will be, just not just not yet. By this point, you will you should be level 20. You might not quite have got to level 20, you might have gone past level 20, depending on how much running around and killing stuff you've done in Act 1. The items that you can absolutely 100% guarantee get, you would have picked that up from the corpse near Gilius and near the place where Milton spawns. That's craftable at the blacksmith. That's a target farmable item from Pusquill. That is a sort of area target farmable thing that you get from the Snake Clan Witch Doctors. That putrid necklace target farmable off the boss in the cave near the Foggy Bank Rift. That might have dropped from Viloth. I'd say if it doesn't, don't worry about it. If it does, then wear it. I, I wouldn't recommend target farming Viloth to get the rings because it takes ages. You can do it if you want. You could get two of those, and for now they'd probably be the best in slot. You can get that as a quest reward, wear it for the energy regen and the damage to beasts, and the resistances, which are nice. So the stuff you should have at level 20, because that's a level 20 item. Definitely that. Definitely that. 
The other thing about that quest is you will start earning Rover's Rep. You get that 250. The 250 Rover's Rep is from that Slith Necklace quest, which is up near the White Mire Rift. All of this stuff's in, in the video you've just watched anyway. So those things are obsolete. That's a quest reward that may or may not be better than what you've got. You may have a Viloth's Ring. What I'd recommend is pick items up that add in acid damage, but don't convert, particularly don't convert acid damage to something else. If you haven't got acid damage on it, prioritize resistances or anything that you feel like, you know, looks good, as long as it doesn't contradict what you're trying to do with the build. So that's, I and mean, that's Milton's hat. You could target farm that. I mean, that's just the best thing I dropped. It's not got anything on it that's really useful to me, but it's got a bunch of supporting things that plus 10% damage to specific enemy types, physique and health, whatever. Ether resistance is nice. I believe it always drops with ether resistance on it. Might be wrong about that, but I think it does, which is good to have. I'm level 20. I put five points into spirit, attribute points, zero points into cunning, 14 points into physique. It's currently only got one point in it. That's maxed out. And those are the skills. What I'm going to do, if you get beyond level 20 before I get another video up, continue to put mastery points in. You're going to eventually be maxing that out. And you can eventually, eventually be maxing out all the nodes along the Trigg's Evil Eye thing. And you're going to max that out, max that out, max that out. Leave that as a one-pointer for now. Devotions... The seven points you get running around Act 1, four points in Rat, three points in Ratch, you finish Ratch off. All the guides at the start of this the text format, it's all in the video description as well, which will tell you what to do later on if you keep going. The other thing you can do is you can go and have a look at the video that I'll link in here, which was the original video I did, which showed how the build would, would look when you've maxed everything out, pretty much, and where to get the other stuff from. I'll do another video after this about Act 2, where to get Ronopraxis Sting, and then how to run, the quickest way to run up through the Forgotten Gods map to get to the Infernal Wastes Rift, which is where you can target farm Sister Crimson for her weapon and for the chest armor that gives plus three to Dreeg's Evil Eye. So that all that information will be coming, or if you want a short cut it, you go and have a look at the other videos that I'll link that, that contain all this information. If you want to walk through, I'll get one posted as soon as I can. This guy can't one-shot bosses at the moment, but pretty soon it will be able to do that. And that is using gear that you can target farm or buy. Other next video I do as well, I'll, I'll list the factions that you need to prioritize in order to get gear items to support this. As previously mentioned, and if I didn't, I really should have done. One of the default recipes at the blacksmith is a vitriolic gallstone. This is brilliant. Make two of these because the damage buffs on them will stack and it adds a whole load of poison damage onto your weapon and acid damage. And that will be translated into damage from Dreeg's Evil Eye because of the weapon damage pulled in on Bloodburst and some of the items. So you craft that. You do need four mutagenic ichor. I was able to craft one. I stuck it on there because I already had a mutagenic ichor on Puskal's tail. So that's on there. What you have to do, it's a toggle skill. So you put it on your skill bar, switch it on, and it will appear there. And what you can do, you can check with this. Get Dreeg's Evil Eye up. So you can see the damage it's currently doing with nothing on, 1736 to 1793. If I toggle that on, it rockets up. And if you've got a second one, you can toggle it on. You'll have two of those icons there and the damage will up even more. So when you're able to craft another one, take that to the inventor, get them to take the component off the item. Don't destroy the item by mistake, because you won't be happy if you do that. You'll put that in there and you will do keep item, which will keep Pascal's tail. And then you can craft another vitriolic gallstone, stick it on Pascal's tail and have two of them separately toggled on. I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments if you're following this guide or if you created your own version of this one shot build. And thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.